So my name is Marcus. I work as the tech lead for the build and release engineering team at Lumina. And um, yeah, at Lumina, we produce a LiDAR sensor for the automotive industry. And yeah, with that, we also have, or at least the software we provide, has to adhere to all the safety standards and requirements that simply just come from the automotive industry. Now, as we heard earlier today, all the automotive companies love Basil. So, of course, we started migrating to Basil last year. Now, if you want to know about more about our Basel migration, I would refer you to my talk from last year in Munich or tomorrow at the Build Meetup. Uh, we did C++ with Gazelle, so it's a quite interesting uh, migration. Now, but the fact that we're using Basel and that we have to adhere to all the standards of the automotive industry, I came up with this talk today, why should we care about test execution output in safety critical industries? I forgot the pointer here. All right. So before I actually go, or this talk is more meant to be to explain the actual problem we have um, rather than providing a solution. Of course, I will show you our solution, which was the best compromise for us um, at the end of this talk. Now, but before we look at the problem, let's get started with a simple example how we imagine this should work. So we have a C++ code base. And with that a typical scenario, we have our CC libraries, CC tests, and we can build and run these tests. But then, due to the automotive industry, we have to, with all the software we ship and provide, we have to provide some reporting. And these reports are all generated from the test execution. So ideally, I would want to say, I use a package tar, name it, uh, put my, my test in as a, as a source, and then simply generate or get the report of this test into my tarball. But of course, if I build uh, and test this target and look into the tarball, I will only find the output of the actual um, build, which is the test executable, but I'm missing my report. But that's actually what we wanted to have, and yeah. I guess you get the idea what we want to achieve. Now let's look at the, the problem, why this is so a big thing in, in the automotive industry. Just from the fact that yeah, cars driving around the streets, it's a safety critical aspect, so you need to fulfill some requirements. And with one of these is for every software that we ship and release, we need to provide some reports alongside. These are, have all the unit tests been executed? is the entire code that we ship covered by test? So do we have 100% branch coverage, 100% line coverage? All this has to be part of the software that is shipped just next to it in a, in a report. And since we want to, you know, we, we want to shift left, so we, we don't only want to ch check at the very end whether the coverage met, is met, we came up with some additional tooling, so we ideally want to be able to depend on the report and do some automated checks on top of that. So looking whether you or the developer submitting a PR actually got 100% line coverage, run coverage, and for instance, then failed the build. And yeah, for this, we need a way to properly depend on the test execution output, not only the test target itself. And with the way it was, Currently with Basel, we didn't really found a nice way to do it. So what options do we have? Of course, option number one is, or maybe the brute force option, you simply fork Basel and implement it uh, according to your needs. But of course, this is not a great solution because it's a high initial effort, and then also the maintenance requires some, or needs some time because we, we of course want to be up to date with the ongoing development to Basel. And then the second option is, um, you could ask an LLM, because that seems what nowadays everyone is doing. And I also get an output, which is, yeah, use some gen query, gen rule magic. Um, but I was not even sure if this would work, so I, I quickly dropped that. Uh, now, what we actually did as our just the best compromise we could come up with, we simply moved the text, test execution to a spot where we can then where we can already depend on the output, which is Basil build. Wait, what? Now, please, um, before you <laughs> complain, let me 
uh, explain we only do this for a certain config. Now, of course, we, we don't want to change the entire behavior of Bazel and now also run all the tests as part of Bazel build. We want to stick to the default behavior, but we have a certain config where we run the tests already as part of Bazel build. And with that, we yeah, then get everything you get from Bazel build. You have a target where you can depend on the output and can, all do, can do all the things that we want. Now, how does the implementation look like? Uh, we simply wrapped CC test with our own uh, LOM CC test, uh, which by default just forwards all the, all the arguments to CC test. So for, for the default use case, it behaves exactly the same like CC test. And then for a certain config, we have a custom rule that uh, on top of the test defines a report target and takes the compile test binary and passes it as a tool to our custom rule. And the custom rule defines all the reports that we want to have as an output. And with that, we can already depend on the reports being generated from the tests. And if we now look back at to the example we started off with, so that's the old example. And if we now look at the diff, we simply replace the CC test with the LUM CC test and to generate the actual report, uh, or in the, in the package tar, now I take the report target that is defined by our custom rule and calling Bazel build, I'm now able to properly generate um, my tar ball that contains all the reports that I, I wanted to have. Now, to not um, change the developer workflow too much, um, we, yeah. We bundled all this in a certain config, which we call the quality config because it contains all the quality-related aspect for the automotive industry. And we also wanted to avoid that developers always have to remember, oh, there's, in this case, Bazel build is enough because we want them to just do Bazel test. Um, and for this case, uh, we wrapped all this behind an alias, so everything that developers have to remember for this one is barbecue. And yeah, with this, I want to thank you for your attention. Um, and yeah, if you want to, or if you have a similar problem and maybe found a different solution, more than happy to talk to you after this. Maybe one caveat to mention, um, having the test execution as part of the build is, of course, a bit unusual. But for us, it worked so far pretty good. There can be some issues. Using the test as a tool, test can be flaky. So there is a certain risk, but right now we, we were pretty good. Thank you.